Okay, great. Yep. Um, hi, um, I teach a course um, in Otis called Neighbor Gap Bridge. It's a global community building initiative aimed at linking core human motivation and cultural experiences uh, with the goal of increasing worldwide happiness. <laughs> we focus on three investigative, investigative phases, neighbor, gap, and bridge. Gesundheit. Neighbors include a Title I elementary school, a designer hotel, and a senior center. They're close in proximity, um, but they're less than 100 yards apart and have virtually nothing in common. So gaps in culture, age, ethnicity, and neighborhood commitment abound. By observing and analyzing the distinguishing characteristics of each neighbor, as well as the space that separates them, Students develop the visual language of reciprocity and compassion necessary to propose design solutions to connect these spaces. As urban ethnographers, we've studied our neighbors and their gaps carefully, as well as their perceptions and beliefs. Students pro propose creative systems interventions which may divert expected paths of action, resulting in a new belief and new action. Shared experiences can result in bridge between neighbors. So we have a flexible design process with training, discovery, and action, as well as lots of tools for observation and inquiry that we're happy to share with ACAD today, with the goal of bridging to ACAD's collective strength. So think of the 40 plus ACAD schools as neighbors with common goals that unite us and gaps that separate us. We're united as institutions of art and design education with common beliefs and goals, yet unique in location, culture, and curricula. We simultaneously compete for enrollment and other assets. We have the ability to collaborate in order to maintain, increase, and, sh and share resources, yet on some level may not wish to. When I started working on this presentation, I couldn't get Bob Gill's poster from the 1980s out of my mind. I love its raw honesty and its tension between competition and collaboration. Forgive me, Bob, I couldn't resist this. Like any decent tribe, Neighbor Gap Ridge enjoys storytelling, so I want to tell you a story. Picture yourself in a rural setting with villages surrounded by grasslands open to herders to graze their animals. This is called the commons. Each herder has an equal sized herd and enough resources for their herd and their families to exist comfortably. One day a herder has an idea. More sheep means more wool and more income. He wonders how this may affect the commons and concludes that it's no big deal. So he adds a sheep to his herd, which only eats a little bit of grass. Okay, but other herders see what he's done and how his family has benefited. And so they decide to add sheep to their herds too. From their individual point of view, <laughs> the gain is great and the loss to the commons resources is small. But the loss to the commons is compounded and it loses significant resources when the herders do this. The tragedy is that when all herdsmen act this way, small losses add up to a disaster for everyone. American ecologist Garrett Hardin's famous 1968 paper, The Tragedy of the Commons, argues that acting independently according to our own self-interest may be in opposition to the whole group's long-term goals. Resources might be thought of as oceans, rivers, parks, office refrigerator, <laughs> or the resources we utilize in order to compete for a shrinking pool of art and design school applicants. This desired outcome has consequences. 
that involve enormous individual institutional efforts with resources of money, time, and people power associated with it. We dedicate valuable resources to promote our individual institutions with no fixed guarantees. Is this sustainable? Are we fighting for the last deck chair on the Titanic? <laughs> By individually focusing our energies on market share? Are we depleting our resources competing for every last student? Strong imperative can inspire us to join forces. Let's take a look at just what might encourage us to compete less and collaborate more. A healthy, just, and sustainable future is something we can all agree on. There's consensus that gets us over the tipping point between competition and collaboration. We're inspired to join forces and divert some of our resources for larger gain. ACAD schools could join forces against growing competitors like the art institutes or large research universities with art departments and large budgets. But what, would it, what if we could think beyond fear, dangers, enemies, and impending doom? What could ACAD's imperative be? What does it look like to shift our focus from competition to collaboration? Last Saturday, I participated in the Otis Open House. The parents I met with were intelligent people, but clueless about art and design as a profession. After talking to them, I imagined handing them a business card with a URL <laughs> that led to a site, an ACAD site, <laughs> that leveraged our collective strength and knowledge as unified ambassadors to the field their child was considering entering. that empathized with parents, <laughs> that argued that art school is a valuable investment. We all have open houses. We might divert some of our individual resources toward an aspirational goal and focus on informing and educating young students and their parents. communicating our key touch points early on in a young artist's life. It's not realistic to collaborate all the time, but perhaps ACAD's imperative includes bridging to some new collective models of collaboration that minimize redundant efforts and maximizes the sharing of resources when it's in a student's best interest in our changing educational landscape. Thank you very much.